I've covered a lot of politics and I've gone, uh, I would go to Oklahoma City or Tulsa, wherever they were giving uh, lectures and I covered them and sometimes the candidates uh, for president or whatever. Uh, I was, when Gerald Ford was coming here, Conoco was kind of in charge of the and the public relations and they we had this little conference beforehand and they said well and the senior reporter in the room will have the last question so when I came back to the office I called them and said I am the senior reporter <laughs> and so I had and what was neat about this they told Gerald Ford my name you know okay the Louise Abercrombie will have the last question well when he got down there he said and it was the last question time he said couldn't remember Abercrombie so he said Louise <laughs> so I'm on first name basis <laughs> I love that uh, and uh, I uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary came here when Chelsea was a baby to the Renaissance Ball and so I photographed him and, and I covered Clinton several times after the bombing and whatever and uh, I, and when George and I went on to be head of UCO mm -hmm. uh, I still went down and spent like a day with him every so often and this one particular day I uh, was down there with him and he had a broadcaster from Bartlesville mm -hmm. it happened to be the day they picked up the bomber mm -hmm. and I, I was in the car headed back to Park City when I hear on KOSU that they've arrested the bomber and he's in Perry mm -hmm. so I thought well okay if I can get to Perry without speeding I'm going to go to this news conference and by then I hear that they have the bomber and they have bought in a helicopter to ditch which so I knew he was gonna be taken out uh, by helicopter so I drove to the town square and, and he comes out in that clip which you girls are probably too young to remember but they're hollering baby killer baby killer well I knew they were going where they were going to take him they were going to take him to the uh, Ditchwich area, and so I jumped in the car and called them. Of course, when I got there, they wouldn't let me in the uh, the highway patrol wouldn't let me in. So I came in and just said, "My boss, guess where I've been?" And uh, at this same uh, that same day, I had a call at night at my house, and uh, a person from Newkirk, which is the next town here, the town said. Louise, the bomb went through Newkirk and stopped at the stop and go. And so uh, I called the, and the manager wasn't there, but I left my number. I just slept with the phone all night. And when I got here in the morning, I was dressed up because it was Chamber of Commerce board day, which I always cover. And I found out we didn't have that story. So I put some jeans on, went up to Newkirk in my disguise and go in there. And they say, hello, Louise. <laughs> 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 and so they tell the story that the, the pickup came in and the truck came in. The truck came backed up in front of the stop and go. Anyway, they went from there over to I-35. Now, I had that story two weeks before CNN had it. Mm -hmm. You talk about women, it, it was kind of the age of women. I did a series, I think 110 stories, about women of the 80s. And I picked women in different vocations, everything from housewives to the welder or whatever. And I ran this series which was very popular. I, I have written several series, but this one was probably the longest one. Mm -hmm. I have never let myself have a struggle because I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. 
if the men came to the table, I came to the table. And uh, for instance, when we were going to buy the mansion, there was a building beside it, and the city commission was going to climb up on, on the roof. Uh, the men are going, I'm going too. So I, I climbed up with them. I, I have never let myself, uh, because I'm a woman, I have trouble and difficulties. I mean, that's not what I did. You get in there, you ask the questions, you do the job, and then you're okay. People learn to respect you, and uh, I appreciate that. Well, uh, of course, uh, we used to do everything face-to-face -face over the telephone. And, of course, basically, you do it by uh, computer, you do it by email. Um, it's a, uh, with all the competition, it's, and with Facebook and, and all that, it's, a, it's uh, you get the information a lot quicker, but so does everybody else. Mm -hmm. So you know, you've got the picture's pin on it. Well, of course it's the people. Mm -hmm. it, it's being able to tell the people's story. Tell the people side. Of course, of course. Any time you you work with a group of people, you know you've got different uh, types of people, and you have to learn to work with them. And uh, you know, the main thing is tell the facts as best you can, and prove it if you can. Uh, I don't know. I, I I would. I, in addition to being a business editor, I'm a columnist. I write a little column every Sunday called "Looking with Lou," mm -hmm. and hopefully it's it's humorous. Not always, but <laughs> most of it is. Uh, when I was allowed to get out and do feature stories and that type of thing, uh, sometimes this stuff had generally been handled by men, but not anymore. I mean, uh, so I, I don't know. I, I think you just have to work at it. Yeah. Uh, everybody kind of makes their own path. And uh, we, we have a reporter now the, who does the county reporting, which is a jail reporting and all that, and, as a woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, where, when I started, of course, there were, there were men. But uh, things like that, things have just changed in, in 50 years quite a bit. You can tell that just beyond, beyond television. Mm -hmm. You can see the talking heads, a lot of them are women anymore. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the whole crew's women as far as the, the weather people, the news people and whatever, so it's just changed. It's no longer a man's world. And if you're good at it, it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. You have the respect, earn the respect. Mm -hmm. Well, because we're all tuning in pretty well, mm -hmm. and uh, whether it's CNN or MSNBC or whatever, we, mm -hmm. we want to know what's going on, and we don't feel like we have to take the politicians' word, always. So, I, I think we pretty well, we still trust the media. Well, of course, you need to educate yourself as best you can. You need to build relationships. Um, when you're good at information, it's probably a good idea to check it. Mm -hmm. Particularly if you're giving it to you by a politician, or, or an yeah, elected official, but uh, the biggest thing is for you to be trusted, mm. and that this source trusts you. How well, was that? it was good to be recognized by my peers and to join them, and. Uh, I was probably a little late in life in joining them because it was just a couple of years ago and like I was 81 at the time, but I'd been working for almost 48 years or whatever. 
So it, it was good to join those mm -hmm. folks. Well, I don't know, in, uh, after I'd been working 10 years, the Chamber of Commerce made me the first woman outstanding citizen. It's been wow. several years since then, but uh, I believe that was, I don't know, 1982 or something. So that, that was a rewarding experience to be recognized by, by my hometown or as such. Uh, and, and, I, and I've just had the, I mean, Senator Inhofe flies in here about once a month. I go out the airport, interview mm -hmm. him. I have for years. And uh, I just, uh, those different things. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I just, oh, yeah. I have these, these take, things happen on a daily experience. I, I'm just mm -hmm. not particularly, you know, one of the thing. Uh, coming up, I, uh, I mentioned a while ago this roast we're going to have. I started that when I was chairman of the Pioneer Tech Foundation. Mm -hmm. They were just sending out letters, and I said, let's do something. So we started roasting different people. And at one time, they roasted me. <laughs> and George Nyken roasted me. Wow. So th those were the top of things that yeah. I did and being able to bring that to my town, you know. Mm -hmm.